I'm Dr. Craig Engel, co-director of the Canine Performance Sciences Program at Auburn University's College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm co-inventor of the Airflow Bumper, and I'm going to describe to you the science behind the Airflow Bumper's design and why it's a better bumper for dogs and trainers. When dogs perform, they increase their need for oxygen and generate large amounts of heat. To increase oxygen and release heat, they need to pant upwards of 200 breaths per minute, which is a large volume of air forced through a very small opening. Anything a dog puts in its mouth reduces air intake and increases strain on the respiratory system because the dog has to work harder to force air through a smaller opening. So we've designed a bumper that increases the airflow but does not lose any of the bumper's training capabilities such as grip or rolling in the mouth and allows the dog to control its tongue which we'll talk about later. It's very important that a dog has control of their tongue when breathing. The basic premise is to keep the bumpers function but restore breathing to as close to natural panting as possible. You can see that in this photo. This dog has an open airway and is able to pant freely. When we put a bumper in the dog's mouth, and a COTS bumper, which is what we call a commercial off-the-shelf bumper, this is your everyday bumper, when this is in the dog's mouth, it actually occludes the airway. The only place for air to go is over the top of the bumper. So what we decided to do was reduce the diameter of the bumper so that the air can flow out of the respiratory system and over and under the bumper as, round, as well as on the sides, which I'll show you later. At Auburn, we have the luxury of a world-class MRI research center with one of the most powerful MRIs in the world. So we used it to venture inside the structure of the dog's head to see how bumpers affect the airway. In this view, the MRI shows an image of the dog's head directly down the middle of the commercial off-the-shelf bumper. First, what I want you to notice is the distance between the roof of the dog's mouth and the bumper. It's only four and a half millimeters. Second, look at the bottom of the bumper. No air can pass under this bumper. Third, look at the tongue, which is compressed six and a half millimeters. This means the dog does not have control of the tongue. Sometimes, depending on how they pick up the bumper, it can cause the tongue to roll back and occlude the airway. That's why a lot of times when you hear the dog come running back to you, they sound as if they're gagging or they're choking. The reason is they aren't able to push the tongue forward to open up the airway. So it's very important that a bumper not compress the tongue or interfere with the tongue as the tongue has to move forward in and out uh, in a natural way so that the dog can breathe and not collapse that airway. Now let's look at the anatomy of the airflow bumper. First, notice the distance between the top of the top and bottom of the bumper. This is the top of the bumper. This is the bottom of the bumper. Again, this is the tongue, dog's brain, nasal cavity, nose. We have 9.5 millimeters of clearance on the top and 7.5 millimeters of clearance on the bottom. This gives the airflow bumper a total of 17 millimeters of clearance versus 4.5 millimeters for the commercial off-the-shelf bumper. Second, notice we have a nice flattened tongue. It's not compressed. Why? Because the dog's teeth are in contact with the bumper, not the bumper in contact with the teeth and the tongue. So this prevents the bumper from compressing down on the tongue and this gives the dog control of the tongue and allows it to push the tongue forward out of the mouth and open up the airway. You're now looking at the COTS bumper depicted in the opposite direction as if the dog is facing you and we've cut that bumper directly down the middle. Here's the roof of the dog's mouth up here. This is the nasal cavity, the lips, 
the tongue, and this is the bumper, straight across in black. Now this is an important area. This is the blue area. This is the breathing zone. And what you're seeing in a, occluding that breathing zone is actually one of the tooth grips that are on this particular type of bumper. First notice that the opening between the roof of the dog's mouth and the bumper is so small that one tooth grip obstructs about 40% of that area. That's how small the breathing zone is. The picture to the right shows the roof of the dog's mouth from the bottom. You can see how the grip, how these tooth grips are sealed with the lips. You can also see how that tooth grip sits right there in the middle, depends on how the dog picks up the bumper, but right in the middle where the air has to flow around it. So you can see how these lips are sealed around the teeth grips and prevent air from flowing out the sides of the bumper. And that's important because we'll show you in the next picture how with the airflow bumper, air can actually flow out of the sides. Now you're looking at a cross section of the airflow bumper with the dog facing you. Here's the dog's nasal cavity. Here's the roof of its mouth the lips, the tongue. Notice the tongue is nice and round. We also have two breathing zones, one above, one below the bumper. We also don't have any obstructions in those breathing zones. Next, this is a view of the roof of the dog's mouth. So you're looking at the roof of the dog's mouth from the bottom. Notice we have a third breathing zone. This is the reason the bumper is shaped in a star pattern because we're able to have the lips lay across these peaks so that air can flow through the troughs and that's what you're seeing the MRI is showing you there's no tissue here that is occluding that path so air is able to flow out of the sides it's also able to flow above and below and then not compress the tongue so the dog has control of their tongue Finally, let's look at them side by side. The MRI calculated the effective breathable area as 7.7 .7 centimeters for the airflow bumper and 1.7 centimeters for the COTS bumper. So that is over a 400% increase in breathable area for the airflow bumper. The dog also has control of the tongue, which allows the dog to place the tongue in the most comfortable position. So by analyzing the anatomy of the dog's mouth, we were able to design a bumper that increases airflow, allows for better control of the tongue, and provides a more comfortable experience for the dog. If you would like to learn more about the airflow bumper and the Auburn University Canine Performance Sciences program, please visit the contact page on our website to email questions or comments. Thank you.